Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan of TV. Back at you another video. And I'm gonna talk about the Ravens Lounge podcast with uh, Gary Down and Ryan Mink. They just did their kind of takeaways from this mandatory OTA period that just passed. Uh, so before we get to that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's keep running it up. Almost at 200 subscribers. Let's keep it going. All right, so we're officially in slow season, man. Between now and the next month, it's going to be slow a little bit, but we're going to keep finding topics to talk about. And today we're going to talk about the uh, the Lounge Podcast and their takeaways from mini camp, right? So the first probably 10, 12 minutes is a lot of Lamar Jackson talk, obviously. I mean, you know, he's the star quarterback. So, you know, they, they go over the contract and things like that and how it was a boost to everybody. It's not on the football side, but on the business side to have Lamar Jackson back in the building because it's like a sigh of relief, right? Uh, people were worried. I was never worried. I knew he was going to be there. And then, you know, obviously they get into the quote about when he says um, about training camp, the I don't know quote, right? When obviously that was taken out of context, you know, the reporters were asking him the same questions over and over again. And he just said, we in conversations. That's it. Simple as that. But, you know, make a good point that if Lamar Jackson planned to hold it out, he wouldn't show up to the mandatory mini camp. You know, you wouldn't hold out and then show up to the mandatory mini camp and then hold off a training camp. It just doesn't make sense. You know, you would just you would just skip everything all together. So, all right, all right, so we're not going to talk too much about Lamar Jackson's contract, things like that, because I'm not worried about it. It's going to get done when it gets done. If it's before the season, great. If it's not, I'm sure it'll happen. All right. So they talked about uh, John Harbaugh talking about Ronnie, J.K., and Gus Edwards. Now, these are three players that the Ravens obviously need for any kind of campaign next year that's going to be successful. Now, with J.K. and Gus... Uh, well, really, all three guys, the plan is hopefully that they'll be back at some point in training camp. And that was something that I was wondering and that they, I'm glad they touched on it because if they're back during training camp, I mean, they have a shot to play during the regular season. Now, J.K. and Gus, he said that they're on the right track for that, that J.K. was even kind of bothering hardball about getting out there and practicing now. Now, obviously, the Ravens are going to be slower with the guys than probably even usual just because of how tumultuous last season was with the freaking uh injuries man historical injury rate so i can see those guys not come back on the field maybe second second week of training camp or so if that's the case then that's lovely because then we have our guys for week one right ronnie stanley um it's a little more interesting because they were saying that he ronnie stands at the point of his rehab process where he's getting in football shape right so he's at that point where it, we're not just recovering from the injury now. We're trying to actually get you in shape and get this uh, injury to perform properly and uh, so that you can perform at your high le your highest level. Now, if Ronnie Stanley can come back during training camp, that would be so huge, man. The Ravens, <laughs> when they paid Ronnie Stanley, it's because he was an all-pro um, cornerstone left tackle. And we haven't seen that guy since. And that's not really his fault. I'm not one into calling players overrated or blaming them for injuries. Injuries are a part of the game, and if an injury can snatch your career, it's kind of unfortunate. Now, Ronnie Stanley's been out for, you know, a year and a half, you know, almost really almost two years, honestly. So it's, it's time now for him to get back on the field, hopefully get that consistency back, okay? Um, they said that both rookie cornerbacks stood out, and that's something that we've been hearing repeatedly, especially with Pepe Williams, who went the, uh, the later of the fourth-round picks between the two. Uh, between him and Jalen Armour Davis. Now, both guys have been standing on. Both guys have been playing well. Now, I I've made videos with mentioning Pepe in it, talking about his character, his demeanor. Him and Marcus Williams, I'm sorry, him and Marcus Peters remind me of each other and how they carry how they carry themselves. You know, it's just like that um, that cockiness, that swag, but in, but in a good way, not like any way that's going to be detrimental to the team, but like in a good way of, you know, like I know I'm a good player, I'm going to show you, but I'm also going to tell you I'm a good player, too. And I, I like that. Dale Armour Davis is a little bit more quiet with it, but he's a good player as well. He kind of has the comparison to him, funny enough, has been Anthony Avery. And we know that Anthony Avery, while he had some of his faults last year, you know, he, he's been a good cover corner for the Ravens. You know, now he's in Oakland. But if Dale Armour Davis can be something like that, that's good for the Ravens because that means that they have a guy that can develop into a potential starter, you know. And that's what Avery was. Avery should have never been, excuse me, I'm sorry. Avery should never have been the number one corner on the roster. And through injury, you know, MP going down, Marlon going down at a point in the season, 
Avery was forced into that role of something that he really wasn't cut out for, you know, and, that, and that's no shot to him. That's just how the injuries happen, you know. Um, and that's for a lot of players last year on the team. But not to get off topic, if Jalen Armand Davis and Pepe Williams can be guys that are contributors year one and continue to get better and better, then the Ravens are even more solidified at corner position, you know, when you look at it in terms of young guys, you know, the throwing Brandon Stevens as well. So, uh, offensively, they talked about um, my favorite rookie. And uh, if you watch enough of my videos, you know that I've been saying this, Isaiah Likely, um, that he kind of ramped up through the process. So, like, he started off, I won't say slow, but he was good, made good plays. But in the last day of minicamp, um, he really took off and really made a, a, a bang, you know, and impressed everybody, and Lamar Jackson included, you know. And there is the one person you want to impress is your quarterback because that's the guy's going to get you the ball. So he impressed the writers. He impressed uh, Mink and Downing. So I'm I'm really excited for Isaiah Likely. Um, if the Ravens don't figure out how to use this guy year one, like right now, it's really going to be a big, big mistake on the end. He's too talented to just say that. Let's give him a year to figure it out. He's too talented for that. Figure a way to get him out there on the field now, please. Okay. Uh, they talked about the backup running back situation, right? Now, we got J.K. and Gus. We know that. But those guys are injured. So what if they can't play week one? Beatty, Mike Williams, and they mentioned Justice Hill. Now, to me, right, I think Justice Hill, they're, they're giving Justice Hill a chance to say, oh, well, maybe, you know, he can uh, make the team. But I, I just I just don't see it for Justice Hill. I, I really don't. Because the original conversation was about Tyler Beatty and his hands, right? He had really impressive hands during uh, mini camp, and that's that's good. They said, well, is he more of a scat back or all-around back? And to me, it doesn't really matter. If he's more of an all-around back, then that's great. If he's more of a scat back, fine. But if he's more of an all-around back, I'd rather have that than what Justice Hill would give me. Justice Hill hasn't been able to give the, any, the Ravens anything consistently since being drafted. You know, Obviously, somebody had his playing time, but at some point, we got to say, why are you not getting on the field? You know, we got to ask that question. Why are you not getting on the field? And with Tyler Beatty and Mike Davis, if they can catch the ball and run the ball, that just gives me more value than when I get out of Justice Hill. And I, I like Justice Hill. You know, I really do. I think he's a good special teams player, punt returner kind of guy. But I just don't see his time in Baltimore really lasting too much longer. Now, he could he could amp up and, and, and prove me wrong. But, you know, so we'll see. Everything is out there for the taking. And then... Um, Obviously, they talked about guys who that they were impressed with, and um, Dalen Hayes came up, right? Dalen Hayes has been a star of the offseason so far, okay? Um, all the mini camps, mandatory OTAs, everything, you've heard Dalen Hayes' name. You know, whether it's getting QB pressures, whether it's picking off Lamar Jackson, Dalen Hayes has made a name for himself, and as a guy that's saying that, I see that as a whole right now on this roster at my position, and I'm ready to snatch it, Okay. And then they were even talking about, they even gave an example of a play about like how he got that, that intensity, that dog in him, where he had jumped off sides and the offense was giving it to him, you know, saying, come on, keep, keep jumping offside, then keep jumping offside, like yelling at him, right? The very next play, he blows past, I think they said it was Jawan James. And, you know, if, if you were allowed to hit the quarterback, he probably would have got a QB hit or a sack on that play. And he was just, he was going at the offense after that, you know what I'm saying? Giving it right back to him. So... The Ravens are picking up guys that have that fire, that intensity to them. And that's good, man, because sometimes when I think of the old Ravens defense, I think of those guys that had that that fire in them, you know. So if Dylan Hayes is one of those guys, even better, right? Now, um, they also talked about, as I mentioned, Jawan James, okay? Now, Jawan James, uh, it, he practiced on mandatory minicamp, which is a good sign, especially if, Ronnie Stanley is not going to be able to, you know, play week one. We don't know that. I'm just saying if he can't. So, Jawan James has been on football for almost, I don't know what, it's almost, what, three years now? So, if the Ravens can get anything out of Jawan James in terms of a starter, that would be great. I mean, he, apparently he's walking around looking good. And if he's if he's participating in these camps, uh, that means, you know, he's on the track to play. Right? So, he really shouldn't have an injury designation on him right now which is what the Ravens need. Because the Ravens last year proved that you cannot have too many offensive tackles and you really can't have too many offensive linemen to a certain extent. So the Ravens are pretty, I won't say loaded, but they they have good depth at tackle. You know, 
Jawan James, Morgan Moses, Ronnie Stanley, um, Daniel Falele, the rookie, uh, Pat McCarry can play some tackle, Tyree Phillips can play some tackle. Even though like they were saying that Tyree Phillips, we should stop trying to make him a tackle and just let him play guard, and that's it. I agree with that. But he has tackle flexibility if he needs to come down to it. And they probably kind of brought up a good point of all the, all the offensive linemen who was kind of on the block to be uh, cut. And they kind of boiled it down to the two Bens, which is uh, Ben Cleveland and Ben Powers. And if it comes down to that, it has to be Ben Powers. I mean, they just drafted Ben Cleveland. Uh, Harbaugh seems to love Ben Cleveland. So I, I would imagine that if, if Ben Cleveland just plays well enough at training camp, he's going to be on this team. And Ben Powers, maybe they trade him how they did Ben Bredesen. And, you know, they move on like that, or maybe they just fight off, cut them. So, offensive line going to have a lot of competition, but they should be stronger as a whole than they were last year. Anything is, is really an improvement over last year, honestly. Okay. So, speaking about Falele, right? They talked about Dan Falele and that his conditioning was poor. Now, this is something that I'm not surprised to hear. I mean, the guy is 6'8", 370-something pounds, close to 380 pounds, like, this is a big human being running around the field. So they were saying that it, he was having struggles just to complete practices, you know. And it's like, while you might not want to hear that, it's okay. Like, he's a big dude. He has been playing football for a long time. He's still learning the game. Now, hopefully over this month break, you know, he gets his conditioning better where he can play more snaps and be more consistent on the field. But, you know, if you're going to be a starter in this league, eventually, for lately, that's the that's the goal for eventually him to play, you know, right tackle, I would assume, maybe even as soon as next year or two years down the line, you know, we'll see how Morgan, Morgan Moses does, okay? Um, you got to be able to play a lot of snaps. They can't be subbing you out because you're tired. And I'm not going to rag on him too much because he is just a rookie, and I'm sure there was a lot of, probably a lot of rookies out there that was catching their breath because the Ravens run in intense practice. So, uh, but Daniel Falele... Uh, they said that he had some conditioning issues, which, once again, shouldn't be all that surprising, okay? And um, kind of the last thing they went over was the wide receiver room. Now, <laughs> Baltimore Ravens wide receiver is the most interesting or talked about subject outside of probably Lamar Jackson's contract. Because everybody was though, what are we going to do with it? Do we have enough guys? Do we have enough talent? On and on and on, Right. So they were kind of split on this, which is kind of a representation of the fan base. Uh, Garrett was saying that while he likes the young receivers in the room, he thinks the Ravens could add a receiver, and maybe they should. He's kind of 40-60 that, that, that they will add a receiver. It's like 40% that they won't. Sorry, 40% that they will, 60% that they won't, right? Mink, on the other hand, was saying, like, uh, don't bring a new receiver in here at all uh, because... It allowed, this allows the young guys to really show and prove and play. Now, I, I get the split on that, um, but the, we got to see through training camp. We got to see through preseason how these guys move around uh, because they're going be to be dependent on for a lot. And the Ravens are thin at receiver. We got to be honest about it. They're, they're thin at receiver. If somebody was to get hurt, even the, even the, the, the third guy was to get hurt, now you, you're possibly calling on all undrafted free agent rookie receivers to make contributions to this team. I just think the Ravens just need receivers just for bodies, period, right? They did, they just need another guy just to have more numbers. But the point Meek was making was that the Ravens have a really tight-knit group of receivers. Like these guys kind of hang out together. They're always around each other. Like So when mandatory mini camp ended, right, um... James Prochet and Rashad Bateman did their uh, post-practice pressure together. And I never really saw players do that before. You know, maybe that's something that they've done before or not. But I thought that was a really good rep representation of how these guys have each other's back and they want to be around each other. Like, it wasn't, Bateman didn't feel like Prochet was in his his um, his shine and vice versa. You know, they, they were both supposed to talk, but instead of talking two separate times, they'd say, yo, let's talk together. And... This wide receiver room, I love that the fact that they're young and tight knit and that they want to grow together. But we gotta see it on the field. You know what I mean? So like all that off the field stuff about them being close is great. That's good for team chemistry. Awesome. But if the results don't back it up or if training camp goes poorly and these guys aren't playing up to that level, the Ravens have to look to add a guy. They have to. I mean, it's just it'll be negligence to not, right? Um, something that Mink mentioned was that 
um, Duvernay. He said that he's looking for Duvernay to make some more plays. And Duvernay is a guy that I really hope he ends up making the plays. I really do because I think he has the talent, the speed, the hands, the ability. The Ravens have been using him as this gadget player running jet sweep side to side. But every time he touches the ball, I feel like he gets seven yards plus. I swear. I really do. Like, Duvernay, he gets the ball. Good things happen for the Ravens. So I want to see more of that. But he has to show and prove on the field and make plays. Like I said with all the guys, they got to show and prove, man. The Ravens need a deep threat. Can Duvernay stretch the field and be that guy? They're going to need him to. You know, Bateman can obviously help with some of that. But Duvernay is a guy who has the, the, the track speed. He has to be able to get down that field and make the play. Um, so that was kind of everything that they talked about that I found interesting during the their kind of wrap of mini camp. And they, they took some fans' questions at the end, which is some stuff they probably already covered in the um, the podcast, really. So uh, the Ravens are in for um, an interesting training camp, right? It's competition all over the field. Outside linebacker, running back, a running back, wide receiver, offensive line. So... When there's this much competition all around the team, all around the field, I think it only leads to guys getting better and, and raising up that level of expectation and raising up that level of play. Um, so, like I said, man, we are in the slow, slow period right now. We got a whole month of not much going on. But I'm going to keep making these videos. We're going to keep finding something to talk about. And y'all going to keep seeing my face, man. All right, it's your boy Gabriel. This is on the Fan TV. I'm out.